Holly Randall Unfiltered is brought to you by our friends at Manscaped. Their Lawnmower 3.0 is a revolutionary electric trimmer that won't nick or snag your nuts. So go to manscaped.com, use code HRU for 20% off plus free shipping. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Holly Randall Unfiltered. Today, I have the very first MILF. Yes, I know it sounds crazy, but she's going to tell you all about why she can claim that title. I have Christina Molina, a.k.a. Sexy Vanessa. Hi. Hey, Holly. How are you? I'm so great. I'm happy to be here with you. I'm so happy to have you mm-hmm. here. I'm so excited for you to tell us all your story, your story, because I know you've got like a crazy story. Yes. So, crazy. um, crazy, crazy story. Yeah. So before we get into that though, I do want to give a really quick shout out to my friends at the perfect fit. Um, they have the best strap ons out there. I use them for all of my productions. They have been hooking me up so much lately on my girl, girl scenes for twisties and, Like legit, these are the best sex toys out there. So you really should go check them out. It's perfectfitbrand.com. And um, if you have ever used a strap on and you know like how uncomfortable they can be with all like the weird like you know, know like they very have the, uncomfortable like the need, leather straps that yes. cut into you and, and, and it's something like practical and, and that you can wear fast you know yeah 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 <laughs> yeah yeah so exactly so it ha- they have these nice kind of like jock strap type um waist oh. that's got elastic so okay. super comfortable, I need, I need that. sits on your waist really nicely, mm-hmm. um, doesn't budge, doesn't cut into you and like create rolls and it, and the, the dildo itself is like really soft and pliable. I need pliable. one those because I use a lot. Yeah. And they're mine great. are no good. <laughs> well, and this one, maybe I will have them send you one. Oh, I love to, I think please. they would do that. They're so lovely. Yes, yes. Um, what's really fun about them too <laughs> is they have... So they have the penis, right? And then they have a hole right underneath it. So your significant other, if it's a gentleman, can put his penis in the hole in the bottom. <gasps> that is And wonderful. you can do a double penetration with one person. Oh, my God. And I've done it myself. Oh, my God. Because I've never I, been with two guys. Yes. So the only time I ever did a DP was with my significant other with a strap on, and it was amazing. Oh, my God. I love that. Yeah. Okay. So. Great. Okay. <laughs> so, all right. That's my pitch. Thank you guys for hooking me up so much and definitely go check them out guys. Cause they are fantastic. So back to you. So should we dive right in? Do you want to just tell us your story and how you came well, to be the big superstar so, you are today? Yeah, we can start from the beginning when I started in, in, in Buenos Aires. Okay. I'm from Buenos Aires and I was in, I started very early age, uh, dancing classes, singing classes, acting classes, um, piano lessons. And I was a, a showgirl since 18 years old. Mm-hmm. That's what I was before the entertainment business, I was a showgirl. Um, I moved to Mexico. I was discovered um, in Buenos Aires in one big review for one Mexican manager. Mm-hmm. And he invited me to Mexico, mm-hmm. working shows there. Mm-hmm. I was only 19 years old. So when I was 20, I moved to Mexico. I left Argentina. Mm-hmm. This is, I'm tired of Argentina. I want to, because Mexico by then in the 70s, was amazing, you mm-hmm. know, the money for the entertainment business uh, was really good, the the economy. And then I moved to Mexico is when I started my shows. And also I started um, uh, to work in mainstream movies, mm-hmm. many mainstream movies with very important actors and directors there. So I lived in Mexico like eight years, mm-hmm. working really hard shows, and, and movies and uh, very, very hard. I was really successful and I have uh, a really good career. And, and I made a huge mistake, never do that, to date a politician. Never do that. Never should date a politician. I feel like I've dodged that bullet and uh, that's not going to happen to me. So, <laughs> yeah, never. Um, 
it has so corrupted, you know, Mexico yeah. uh, politicians. What specifically did he do there? What was his position? It was like a, a secretary uh, uh, in, in the government, with the secretary, and okay. was very close to the president. Uh, that by then was Madrid, uh, Miguel de la Madrid. Um, and that was her biggest scandal in Mexico because the wife found out about everything. How did she find out? Um, women are smart, you know mm -hmm. what I mean? More than men, you know? Yeah, they yeah, always, yeah. Find, always yeah. find out. So um, to make the story short, um, one day they, I was I had my green card, everything, and they called me from the office, the big of the office. I so said, they took my green card from my hands and I said, we give you two days to leave the country. Wow. With Yeah, two days to leave the country. Can you imagine? Wow. I didn't have no, Yeah, two days. So and you'd built your career out there. You had your whole life out there. You yeah, there I could come, no, I could come back until the president leave. That was another three years. Wow! So they sent me to. I had to go back to Argentina with my mother, all my stuff. So and I always I left my house. I planned to come back in three years. That I did, but I tell you how what happened. So. And I said, and my uh, my lawyer said, you can go. Don't worry, you come back in three years when this is come down. Mm -hmm. So when I was in Buenos Aires, uh, the bigger producer uh, Los Almada producers actors that I worked before in one movie that was uh, uh, La Muerte del Chacal. It means that is the death of the serial killer. Chacal is serial killer. Mm -hmm. So and um, I was a co-star in that movie. So when I went to Buenos Aires, they did the second uh, movie, El Regreso del Chacal, when the murder came back. So they uh, they flew me to Bronzeville, Texas. They were filming the movie. So I said, okay, happy, please. I want to leave. I, was, I, was, I didn't want to be in Argentina. It was not for me anymore. So I moved to Bronzeville. Uh, I stayed there for a while shooting this 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 movie, and a biggest fan, one big fan friend in Mexico flew to Bronzeville, Texas to meet me and said, listen, if we, get, if we get married, you can always come back to Mexico. So, so let's, after the, the movie, I moved back to, I moved to Miami with him. He has a house in Miami Beach, really nice, perfect. I said, let's go, let's get married. We go one month to France, mm -hmm. to Paris. Yes, I've never been in France. I want, I, want to, I want to go to France. So you said this guy was like a fan of yours? He was a fan, friend fan, you know what I mean? Right, okay. Um, but I didn't know him very well. But, mm -hmm. you know, I wanted, I was, when I was young, I was very, um, I, 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 I fearless of anything. As yeah. A, and adventures, I was always very adventurous woman. Okay, I want to go honeymoon to France for a month. That mm -hmm. would be fun. So, and I was not fun <laughs> with him, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. It was good to be in France, but you can be in paradise, but when you're with the wrong person, it's a nightmare. Oh, yeah. I hate him so much. So then when we came back to Miami, I said, well, let's go back together to, to Mexico and we get divorced. No problem, you know, okay. we didn't get along at all. So... You have to live with a person before you get married. You know what I mean? For a while. Oh, yeah. Don't I'm... get married without not living together so you know. I, I have, I've been married twice. <laughs> yeah. The first person that I married, I did not live with no. before we got married because yeah. of immigration reasons. He was from England. Um, and yeah, it did not work out. No. My current husband, we lived together for a few years before we got married. And you have to. Everything's fine. Yeah. <laughs> I agree. You know the person. Yeah. You don't know the person until you live with. Absolutely. So when we go back to Mexico, I said, well, now it's not going to be a problem. So in, in the uh, airport, they took me to the office. I said, Cristina Molina can come to Mexico. Mm -hmm. So I, will, I go back to Miami, <laughs> okay, with him and say, okay. So then we got separated and I stayed mm -hmm. in Miami. He went back to, to Mexico. Um, and then I started my, my, my dancing and the shows. They are everything that was, uh, I, I, I met one Asian and he booked me in, in shows. So what kind of shows are these? Are these like, like um, pinna? Is reviews, it re, No, no, I never did a striptease. Okay, uh, so is... Reviews, I'm a singer and dancer. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, great. I, I started dancing ballet when I was five years old. So oh, wow. I'm, a, I'm a dancer. 
And then, este, uh, so I, I, I work in many theaters in, in Miami, theaters, mm -hmm. um, uh, cabarets, whatever, mm -hmm. until I met in one show my ex-husband. Mm -hmm. So my, well, I was supposed to be there for my work visa six months and go back to, to Buenos Aires and come back. Mm -hmm. uh, and he says, you don't have to leave. I want to marry you. Let's get married. Um, I married him in three months. So okay. you don't have to leave the country. Okay. So at the beginning, I married him for the papers, but I really fell in love with him, like mm -hmm. crazy love. So um, I didn't know what he was uh, doing for a living, you know what I mean, until I found out in the wild what happened. <laughs> because he has all this money. It was in the 80s, you know what I mean? Yeah. All this money to spend. Okay. You told me you work in construction, but how all this money is coming from, like yeah. crazy, you know, boats, he has speed boats, this, that is a construction, I don't know about that. So then until I, I found out uh, when, you know, before I got married, I found out what he was doing. Which was? That he was a smuggler, you uh, know, the 80s, yeah. uh, that was very popular in Florida, that was the biggest smuggler mm -hmm. in Florida. Wow. Um, I believe me or not, that excited me that life so much. Yeah. Excited me so much because it's so much, ex it's, it was excited for me. Oh, yeah. Okay, I am with a smuggler. And, You're young, and he's young, dangerous. He's so, so dangerous. Um, life's dangerous. He was not dangerous, but the life was dangerous. Yeah. Uh, because you never know what's going to happen. Yeah. And we have all the money in the world. Well, they love, and we were young and happy, and um, was perfect. Like the movie Blow, mm -hmm. <laughs> with Johnny Depp. So it was perfect for three years, only last three years. You know, when something is so perfect, don't last forever. This you know, true. it's short live, very yeah. short live. So in three years, they took him from me. So in three years, I, I, I know you have everything one day, and next day you don't have nothing. They took everything. So he was arrested. He was arrested. And how did that happen? Like what? We'll say like a conspiracy. They 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 waited for him in the middle of the ocean, close to Bahamas, okay. when he was there for one, you know, when operation, he was operation moving stuff, you know. Because by then, you know, at that time the eighties is different. I don't know how they do it now. I, don't, I yeah. didn't. I didn't. Yeah. There's another smuggler. <laughs> so, but I mean, by then they used to throw the stuff in the water. Mm -hmm. Close to Bahamas, you know what mm -hmm. I mean? So shh, all this stuff. What he was doing was picking up everything, you know what I mean? So when he got close to the stuff, all the DA, everybody was waiting for him right there. Conspiracy, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So wait, okay. So they throw the drugs in the ocean. Mm -hmm. um, and then someone comes to pick it up. Like, is it in bags attached to a buoy or something like uh, that? Like, how do you find it? Well, uh, they were like uh, for sure, bags, uh, like uh, in 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 inside uh, something that flow, you okay. know, like a uh, bags of yeah. How do you call those? Like uh, like floating. They were floating in the water. Okay. So it was easy. You're picking up everything, um, bring to Miami and give away. You know? Right, right, right. Yeah. Okay. He got rid of as soon he got to Miami, he got rid of everything. Right. So that but when este when uh, when they were there, he split because he was the best driver so ever. I mean, mm -hmm. crazy driver. Um, and he he was running for hours until he, he, he didn't have no gas. So when they caught him, and they caught him, and he said, oh, finally, you are the famous Bruce Austin. I said, yes, man, <laughs> it's me. <laughs> and that's it. Everything was over. Wow. So, so you, you went to prison? Yeah. Okay. So what'd you do? So what did I do? I was crazy. I mean, insane because we were, by then, he produced for me a big show, was had, had review, a big review, that um, with dancers and magicians, was a great review that we were, uh, he was a producer. And we were, I was traveling with this show uh, to the islands. I was in Puerto Rico like six months in the Hotel Sands working for, in this review for all all the boats that were coming to see the show, um, 
So I said, well, I cannot continue this review. It's a lot of responsibility for me by myself. I said, mm -hmm. what do I do? I said, I have to quit the review. Mm -hmm. And the DA came uh, to talk to me, but didn't bother me as well. That was a crazy thing that didn't do anything to me, didn't bother me. Mm. Yeah, because he told the DA that I don't, my wife doesn't know anything about nothing. Mm. He said, but it didn't bother me. It's weird, no? But it didn't bother yeah. me at all. Yeah. Maybe they figured they had everything that they needed. Yeah, they, they had did. your husband. Yes, like... it didn't bother me at all. But I was alone. Yeah. Again. Yeah. So I have to, every time I have to reinvent myself, Mexico, uh, Miami, now I have to reinvent myself, but now next. Okay, keep working my shows by myself, you know, alone, without the help, because you cannot be, I, I only was on the stage. I didn't have nothing to do with the dancers, the mm -hmm. produce, the, yeah. so that he was taking care of that. So, so I have to quit and start all over again. Like my life, that is my life. I always start all over again. Yeah. So I work, uh, I keep working in shows until a, a friend of mine uh, introduced me with a producer of Reality Kings in 2002. Okay. So this, they started a new website uh, called Melv Hunter. Yes, I'm very familiar with Do you Milf remember Hunter. Milf Hunter? Of course. Hey, I've been in the porn industry for like 23 years. I yeah. totally know Milf Hunter. Well, you know, I mean, 20 years. Yeah. That was like 20 years ago. Yeah. So um, that is interesting because by then I was a, a dating a, a boyfriend. I had a boyfriend by then much younger than me, 17 years, 17 mm -hmm. years younger. Because mm -hmm. after that, now I, I like younger men. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? I started. Um, with him, we used to... Uh, do like um, uh, home movies. Mm -hmm. We used to love to do home movies because it's so excited with your boyfriend, you know, shoot um, uh, all crazy stuff and, you know, having sex or whatever, and then watch yourself. It's so it's more excited to watch yourself than uh, any other movie, no? Mm -hmm. it's, uh, we, we used to love to do that. So I was very um, excited with the pornography and, and, and intrigue and, and I'm a very passionate woman. I love sex. Mm -hmm. I love sex. I said, okay, so they invite me to this production. I said, this movie. Well, I want to I want to try to see how it is, you know. I want to, I'm excited to do mm -hmm. this. I have to do this. I want something I wanted to do for a long time mm -hmm. because we were crazy. My boyfriend and I mean, we used to have sex all over the place in the nude beach, here in public, uh, everywhere, you know, like so you a very used adventurous. To people we used to people. You. We, yeah. I love that. I like, I am very... You're an exhibitionist. Exhibitionist, yeah. yeah. It made me excited when somebody's... Well. Yeah. Well, that, I mean, that's that's what makes someone like a perfect porn star is that yeah. that yeah. feeling because that's what and you're I doing. And I used to love to do that. I said, oh, this has to be hot. And that was my first uh, uh, MELF movie. That was, I am the first MELF ever, really. That's I started amazing. the MELF. I started, yeah, the MELF. Yeah, because the MILF revolution is something, you know, that I've been around and I've seen progress because, like I mentioned, I've been in the industry like 23 years and, you know, it used to be you just wanted young, hot girls, like young, you know, mm -hmm. and then by the time you were 26, 27, you were kind of like past it. And then this this new kind of trend started where like the older woman was really young, becoming very older with a younger guy yeah was becoming um mm -hmm. very attractive to 20 years the ago. audience yeah mm -hmm. and and it still continues to this day milf is one of the top yes. searched for terms oh, yeah. in porn online because the people like to see older women with young guys mm -hmm. is, is why it, do you think that is it? First of all, the younger younger men young men love older women mm -hmm. love because all the, my followers are young, 20s, you know, I mean, mm -hmm. I mean, uh, I can be the grandma, 20s, the oldest, 30s, they love, and I say, it's, they just adore older women, because mm -hmm. they, 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 I tell you why, because, not because uh, the experience, somebody explained me, the guys, that the younger girls, you can have any younger, you can find in the corner younger, it's so mm -hmm. easy to find young girls, but the older woman, 
experienced older woman is hard to get. Mm -hmm. The young guys, they cannot get that easy. It's, it's like a fantasy for them. Right. Because the older women don't go and look for young guys. Yeah. And most so, of them are married and yeah, might so not be interested in sex anymore. For, for men, that is because the young girls are easy to get, but mm -hmm. the older women hard to get. Mm -hmm. And they always want something hard to get. Mm -hmm. A woman, uh, of course, that look good. You know, I mean, older women look good with experience. They like the experience yeah. that the younger girl cannot give them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, that makes sense. They want to learn. Right. Yes. And you have so much to teach them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they want to learn something different or something new. Yeah. All right, guys, we're going to take a quick commercial break. And when we come back, we're going to talk about her actual first scene, what it was like, and uh, what she's doing <laughs> these days. So hang tight. Got Bush? You definitely do if you haven't started using the products from my sponsor, Manscaped. Since I've started working with Manscaped, they've really expanded on their product line. It's incredible. So of course we've got the Lawnmower 3.0, their revolutionary electric body trimmer, which is not only cordless, but it's also waterproof. So you can actually use it in the shower. They also have the Crop Preserver and the Crop Reviver, a ball deodorant and a ball toner to keep your balls smelling nice and fresh. And if you get their perfect package, you will not only get the aforementioned ball toner and ball deodorant, but you will also get, of course, the electric trimmer, a shed travel bag, and their boxer briefs, which are the most comfortable boxer briefs you will ever wear. You can get all of this for 20% off at manscaped.com by using my code HRU. That's 20% off at manscaped.com by using my code HRU. All right, guys, we're back. So, Christina, Tell us about your actual first scene for Reality Kings. Do you remember who it was with, where yes, it was? Yes, uh, Sean. I don't know the last name, but it was Sean, a famous uh, actor because he he was in every scene for Melf Hunter. He was the hunter. Okay. He was famous hunter. And we um, um, my my picture was in front of the website uh, for the Melf Hunter for a long time. Mm -hmm. um, I was a, it's a really was a really nice guy. I felt very comfortable. Um, I, I'm a natural, it was really easy so and really good. You for weren't me. nervous at all? Not at all. Uh, I'm a natural, uh, because I, when I'm acting and working, I, I don't even think that the camera is there. It's just, mm -hmm. I, I like, it's so natural and, um, and I love sex, so I don't have to act, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And I do whatever I do anyway, so. Mm -hmm. But it was, was a good experience with him, with Sean. Yeah, it's very important also the the talent. Yes. That make you feel that you have also some attraction, you know yeah. what I mean? Because the problem is sometimes the company you, you work, when I, I used to work for the company, companies, um, you go to the set and you have somebody that mm, you don't get along at all. You don't mm -hmm. know, you don't have the chemistry, you don't like, no attraction. Mm -hmm. Um, some men don't treat you nice, you know, it is not everybody is so nice, you know. Mm -hmm. So that was a good experience. What do you do when you're paired with somebody that you don't have chemistry with? Like, how do you get through that scene? I'm an actress. <laughs> I do a, a very good anyway. <laughs> yeah. But, you know, it's nice when you don't have to act. Yeah. You know? yeah. That is that is natural when mm -hmm. you don't have to act. But, you know, so if, you, if it's not, you have to act. Yeah. Do you do scenes with women too? Of course. I love women. Yeah. I'm bisexual. Okay. I, 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 my first experience with a girl, I was 18 years old. Okay. My first experience. And mm -hmm. do you prefer older women or younger women or just depends on? Depends the woman. Right. Okay. Yeah. Depends the woman. Yeah. Okay. yeah. Some older women hot and that uh, you're attractive and some young girls says no age for sex. Any age is good. Yeah. Depends the, the woman and the chemistry. Yeah. Do you have any favorites? I, I work a lot with Nina Harley. Oh, wow. And I love her so much. I bet you two are like she is together. That, yes, amazing. We have so, that. We work a lot together, mm -hmm. and she also feels we feel so comfortable with each other. We are so open and so free, and it's not limits for us. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? And she's also a lot into 
domination, um, and I love that too. Mm -hmm. um, I am a dominate. I, I dominate, and I can switch. I can be submissive, dominate. You know what I mean? I switch okay. with her. I switch because she's the dominant. You know yeah. What I mean? But yes, I love working with her. She's amazing. Yeah. Do you prefer to be dominant or submissive, or does it just depend? It depends. With her, I love to be submissive because yeah. she's such a great dom. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I love to be submissive with her. We mm -hmm. had such a great scenes together. But I prefer to be dom. Yeah. Okay. What are some of your favorite scenes that you've done? Like if somebody doesn't really know your work and they're like, okay, this is like, she's so hot. Like I want to check out Sexy Vanessa. Like where would you tell them they should go? Well, I have a, a one scene that I, one of my favorite was Dr. Adventures. Okay. Um, I have that, that scene with uh, Eva Divine. Okay. And um, a very nice guy from Europe. I don't remember the name, but that Doctor's Advent, Doctor's Adventures are very nice. And also, I love a movie that did um, a Fifty Shades of Vanessa. That okay. is really intense. Um, the whole movie we shot in dungeons uh, was really, really hot, sexy. Uh, Fifty Shades of Vanessa was one of my favorites. What brand was that for? The Porn Star Platinum. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, so, so I have a lot of good uh, stuff there. <laughs> and what are you doing these days? You have your only, you have an OnlyFans, yes, right? Yes, I have my OnlyFans. It's doing really good. And yeah. then what, yeah, what kind of content are you shooting on there? What kind of content? Um, I, I love OnlyFans because uh, I am my own boss mm -hmm. and I a producer, director, and I can pick the people that I really like, you know. Mm -hmm. I don't have... Uh, uh, I just uh, like to uh, to work with good talent that I like, mm -hmm. not with people I don't like. So, like, yeah, I used to with the companies. Well, not all the time, but sometimes. Mm -hmm. Do you enjoy interacting with your fans? I love interacting with my fans. It's so much, it's personal, so it's so much fun, yeah. yeah. And that's why they fans, they love, they're into only fans now. Um, I, I noticed that they, I have a website too, sexyvanessa.com. But it's not working anymore. It's, it's not working so good anymore because everybody's in OnlyFans now. Yeah. They don't care about websites. Yeah, because now they have that ability to connect with you to connect directly. And that's so directly. important to people. Yeah, directly. We talk, we uh, message, we message in DM, and we do FaceTime. Mm -hmm. I do FaceTime. I do phone sex. They love phone sex. I bet you're so good at phone sex because yeah. you have such the accent and you have such a sexy voice. Yeah. I can imagine. I love to talk dirty with them and they just, it's, it's so good. Um, FaceTime and sexting, all that Do stuff. you do like custom videos or anything I, like that, that? I do a lot of custom what videos. What are your most common requests? It's crazy what I'm going to tell you, but they love feet. Okay. They love my feet. I have nice feet. Yeah. You know what I mean? They love, they're in love with my feet. What, I want more feet, more feet. I had to do every day feet videos. It's crazy. Jesus <laughs> Christ. They love my feet. I have pretty feet. <laughs> uh, yeah. Um, they also love a strap on a lot. That's why I need a good one. Okay. I love a lot of a strap on because I shoot a lot with women. Mm -hmm. uh, three sons with wig, two girls, one yeah. girl. Yeah. Or uh, one guy, one girl. So I, I, I need a strap on, a good strap on. Yeah. It's something that you put it on, take it but fast, you know what I mean? Like yeah. you don't have to cut and do it. It's, they are very complicated, my strap ons, because they have all these belts yeah. that take forever. To, Telling you the perfect yes. fit. Yeah, you're gonna I, love I, it. I, I They're gonna, Zorro gonna, strap on. I'm gonna get now. They're gonna make you very Emergency. happy. Emergency. gonna change your life. 911. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah, they like a strap on a lot. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because it's like kind of the best of both worlds. You still get that. That penetration action, which is really hot, but it's between two women. So and they like men too. Men like strap on. Yeah, men love strap on. You mean men like being pen like of being course. pegged? Of course. And you're into that. Of course. Why so, not? When, hey, you're, yeah. Whatever I'm a, you're I, into. I am a dumb. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, um, have you ever had any bad experiences in the adult industry? Like any uh, cautionary tales that maybe somebody who's interested in getting into the industry could learn from, or have you been I, I know, pretty lucky? I, I, I never had a bad experience, really. I always work with good people. That's no, good. Thanks God. I, I heard that some girls they have bad experience, but I heard 
that um, a few girls that they have a really bad experience in Europe, that they got beat mm -hmm. and everything. Yeah. And I was invited. I was in London. I was invited to work for some producers there. Where was it? In Prague. Or, uh, even with Rocco. Mm -hmm. Rocco invited me to work. And when, but I am the scared to Rocco that... that those people, the, that, that people are in Europe, they're very intense and aggressive and mm -hmm. violent. Mm -hmm. I don't like violent sex. No, yeah, no, if you're for, not, not into that, no. something. It's important to, I, I mean, I think you, you bring up a good point. It's important to research mm -hmm. the companies that you're mm -hmm. going to work with or you get offers from and make sure that that kind of content is something yeah. that you're into. I think that's where the bad experiences come mm -hmm. from. Girls either are misled by agents, misled by whoever, don't do research on who they're going to work with or don't get the proper information and they show up and it's a scene that like, happened with they are not prepared for. Yes. This poor girl, they destroy her. That's so and she ended really in bad shape, you know, destroy her. Uh, uh, the Europeans are brutal. They're very violent and they, that is not sexy. That is not sexy at all. Yeah. You know, you have to be very twisted if a, a, a violent a scene like that turn you on. You know what I mean? Yeah. Very twisted. Because a normal person don't look for that. For <laughs> Yeah. Violent. Well, I mean, I think it depends on everybody's into something different. But I think the most important thing is just communication and like setting boundaries and abiding by them. Because some people really like intense stuff, like stuff that I look at and I'm like, I could never do that. That is like no way, no hell. Like I personally don't see the value or the attraction to that, but somebody else does. And as long as like everybody is yeah. on the same page, everybody's informed on consent, like you're consenting adults, you can do whatever you want. I don't judge. But I think that the problem is a lot of times is that there's really poor communication yeah. and girls have a hard time setting boundaries um, and sticking up for themselves. And I think that you know, I've talked to a lot of girls in the industry who either started later or started young. And I've heard a lot of people say that um, sometimes if you start porn too early, like if you start porn at 18 and you don't, you're not in that place mentally yet where you yeah. like know how to stand up for yeah. yourself, that you get in those situations. You started porn obviously much later in life. Floris. <laughs> so you were like a grown woman. I was and a you real knew. male because now it's ridiculous. They make a 26 years old. Oh, yeah. Melf. <laughs> How the 26 years old? The Melf is a woman who has sex with the this, this son friend. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, and the son friend is 20. I mean, you cannot be 26 and be a Melf. It's ridiculous. I, I got to tell you, I have shot scenes for some companies where the Melf was younger than the other performer. It's ridiculous. And a lot of times it's just if someone's had like a lot of plastic surgery you know, or like really big lip fillers that makes you look older, companies will cast them as a MILF. And it's like, they're not a MILF. They've just like had too much work done. Yes. You know what I mean? <laughs> so they look older, but they're like actually 26. That's ridiculous. Yeah, it's, it's, yeah. It, but that just shows you how incredibly popular that um, genre is, you know, that these companies are reaching for like whoever can like maybe fill the MILF role because it's in such high demand. In high demand, yeah. Yeah. Like mm -hmm. true MILFs like yourself are not always easy to come by. Yeah. Because everybody said, no, we want to see only with young guys or mm -hmm. young girls. Mm -hmm. uh, young girls. The, 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 the other day I have a, a scene with two beautiful girls in Florida. One was 19. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the other was 20 something. Um, they just love those scenes. It's yeah. like a, the, the, a, you know, this, I don't know why, but they love to see me with young people. That makes sense. Do you ever get like young girls that you work with who, you know, like we just talked about are kind of maybe naive. Um, uh, maybe you're struggling to kind of find their foothold in the adult industry. Do you ever like find that you kind of take them under your wing and give them advice or, you know, kind of like tell them, you know, maybe how they could, should navigate their mm -hmm. career. Not really, because the young girls that I met, they have so much experience already. This 19 year old girl uh, that I shot the other day in Florida, uh, oh my God, he's 19 years old and he's so experienced with the strap on. Oh, okay. He was fucking my, my, the other girl and me <laughs> together. So, so, oh, you have experience with the strap on. These girls, they start young. Yeah. Because she was very, no, I didn't. 
I didn't need to get this car that yeah. I want to so you don't, put you in don't my way. I want find to. that you need to like do a big sister kind of thing. Not yet, but I will one day. <laughs> so you are uh, 68, right? Mm -hmm. Which is crazy. Um, you look amazing. Thank you. So how do you take care of yourself? Like, how do you look so good at this First age? First, the jeans. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Number one is I, I think you're so right yeah. about that yeah, because yeah. we're always falling into that trap of being yeah. like, oh, I can look like Jennifer Lopez if I just like, you know, take all of these, use all of these face products. I'm like, Jennifer Lopez is just like jeans. a superhuman. Jeans, yeah, but no, jeans. no, Jennifer Lopez, okay. It's jeans, but a big, huge discipline. Jennifer Lopez doesn't have a glass of wine. Mm -hmm. uh, he work out like three hours a day. Has a, he traveled with her own, uh, 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 his own, um, his trainer. A diet, sacrifice. You don't look like Jennifer Lopez easy. Her yeah. life is uh, it's a lot of sacrifice, discipline. Jeans and discipline. Always, uh, also have a trainer forever. You need a trainer. Mm -hmm. You need to have a trainer. You cannot work out by yourself. Mm -hmm. If you see, if you want to see a, a difference in your body, yeah. you need a trainer. Um, yeah. Diet, of course. And I take all the vitamins alive, you know, antioxidants, everything, and uh, important, uh, good products. And also a secret to maintain a good skin. Uh, and I use this, this product for, they're looking at my hands. <laughs> no, you know, sorry. Yes, because I was thinking about how, you know, usually if someone's had a lot of work done, because mm. I know you've said that you've never had plastic surgery except yeah. for your boobs, you can tell because the hands don't match the face, but your hands look amazing. I mean, I'm what, like 20 years younger than you, and I feel like my hands look older than yours. Oh, no, you have beautiful hands. But yeah, so sorry, I was, you caught me. I yeah, was looking yeah, at your hands, looking at my <laughs> and they do, like your hands look am amazing. Thank you. They really do. The jeans, jeans. Yeah. But and um, also I drink a lot of water. Mm -hmm. You have to drink a lot of water and I'm sleep. So and sleep at least eight hours. It's important to sleep. Mm -hmm. um, water, sleep is the key, you know, because when you have lack of sleep, it affects everything. Mm -hmm. um, even you gain weight when you have lack of sleep. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because it also mean you make poor decisions yeah. the next day mm -hmm. because you're tired. I'm healthy, no, no drugs. No, mm -hmm. I never smoke in my life. Uh, uh, I mean, yeah, that's healthy, healthy life. Yeah, and also the the amazing product I use for um, thirty something years is retinol. Mm. Retinol, but that's uh, exfoliate your skin. You have to wear it at night, like a one drop here, here. At night, uh, you massage your skin with the retinol. Um, uh, exfoliate and you always get rid of the dead cells and mm -hmm. you will have new skin, new skin and you never get wrinkles. I so use you use the retinol because I have moisturizer with retinol in it, but you use the moisturizer, the retinol serum. Oh yeah, the retinol. Okay. Yeah. So that's it's, it's not a serum, it's a cream. Okay. And it's a strong. Strong, a very strong. Very so it's strong. a specific. Yes. Okay. So then uh, I'm going to get that from yeah, you no, the afterwards. Yeah, the retinol you have. You ha yeah, you need it. Okay. You're going to tell me your brand. It's more. When I go to my room today, I'm going to take a picture yeah. of the the tube that I have, okay. and you have to get it. It's it's amazing. Okay. You never get a wrinkle. Send it. To me. I don't put. I don't put in my hands. Only put in my face. Right. You cannot put also here neither, be in the chest because it's too strong and it's very the skin here is very delicate. Yeah. So then you wait like twenty minutes and you use all the the creams. You know, night creams. Mm -hmm. but it's only at night. Okay. And you know the the most incredible cream I use also for thirty years is Yanka. It's from Paris. Okay. Yanka. That is. A, Fabulous. That's okay. all I use. Yeah. Okay. I'm going to have to, you're going to have to give me all of this later. My audience is 96% men. So oh, everyone watching right now doesn't give no, a shit about what we're talking about. No, for about. sure. No, men also, they should take care of themselves too. <laughs> the skin. I like when men, they take care of themselves. Yeah. I like pedicure, manicure, pedicure, the skin. The, the men should take care of like everybody else. I agree. Know, like women. I agree. Uh huh. I agree. Um, so, some of my last questions. Um, so you're an older woman who's obviously fully embraced your sexuality. You're out there living your best life. Age is just a number for you. What advice would you give to 
women who are maybe older, who maybe feel like maybe they've gone through a divorce, you know, they're, they're coming back out. They want to embrace themselves sexually. They want to try new things that they've never tried. What would you be your advice to somebody who's maybe trying only now in their later years to find themselves Those sexually? Women that are um, uh, still act, active, you know, and passionate. Try to find younger men. <laughs> <laughs> That's the secret. <laughs> the the younger secret. men. <laughs> yeah, no, believe me or no, because we suck the, the youth of the younger men, you know. That's what they, I think the, younger, <laughs> the young guys, uh, they keep me young, you know, all that I'm sucking the youth. I'm Are a, you like I, a secret I, vampire? I, I, I am a vampire. <laughs> 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 you know what I mean? I suck all the youth, you know, and I, I keep me young. <laughs> And also, uh, they're going to give you more, like, you know, it's, if you are very active and very sexual, you need younger men, you know, mm-hmm. to keep with you. Mm-hmm. Because yeah. if you have somebody older, you cannot keep with you. You kill him in two minutes. Yeah. If I have somebody older, you know, I, I mean, I'm a skirt and die in, in the bed, you know what I mean? I mean, because I can keep going. I have a lot of energy. <laughs> so you had to take a lot of vitamins with me. <laughs> yeah. But yes, um, um, don't be a skirt. Younger guys love older women. Uh, you will have great sex. <laughs> but that keep you alive. You need to, don't never stop having sex mm-hmm. because it's healthy. It's very healthy and that keep you alive. And it's very important to have a very good uh, sexual life. So yeah. you need a lover. Okay. They need a lover, okay. a good lover. Okay. Christina's um, advice for eternal youth <laughs> is younger men. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Well, thank you so much for coming in. It's been such a pleasure getting to know oh, you. Thank you to invite me. I love you. You're so much fun. Yeah. Thank <laughs> you. Fun, yeah. Can you tell everybody where they can find you online? Okay. And Instagram, um, and it's underscore Vanessa underscore one V as Vanessa. Uh, or Twitter, sexy Vanessa three. And don't forget to share my OnlyFans. OnlyFans. That comes sexy Vanessa, and we can have so much fun together. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. And you guys can find me at Holly Randall on Instagram and on Twitter. I, since we're talking about OnlyFans, I also have an OnlyFans. I don't plug it very often, but I do have one. It's OnlyFans.com slash Holly Randall. So you can go there and um, check it out. Um, and of course, if you want to support this podcast, go to patreon.com slash Holly Randall Unfiltered, where you can watch interviews like today's live in real time. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you next week. Since I've started working with Manscaped, they've really expanded on their product line. It's incredible. And if you get their perfect package, you will not only get ball toner and ball deodorant, but you will also get, of course, the electric trimmer, a shed travel bag, and their boxer briefs, which are the most comfortable boxer briefs. You can get all of this for 20% off at manscaped.com by using my code HRU.